in detail in the plan is to prioritize producing affordably priced housing. And what we mean is that housing that is affordable to everyone who is who wants housing in the city. But in particular, those families that are making 120% of the area median income or less. And for Springfield, that's about $77,000 a year for a family. So the market rate housing that is being um, coming online and being contemplated for the future is awesome. Keep up that great work. But many, much of that housing is out of the price range for families that are making $77,000 a year or, or less. And so we are recommending through the report, through the plan, a number of different strategies to close that financing gap to ensure that there is housing for, as I said, quality housing for all. Last, the last pillar is to lower barriers to development and redevelopment. And I want to acknowledge that the city has been doing a lot to make house to be customer service focused, to be open for business. And so this is really an acknowledgement to say, keep up the good work that has been going on uh, within the city itself. So there's over two dozen recommendations of different policies, different programs, different interventions, different strategies that need to be executed over the next four years. These are just some examples, um, just to give you sort of a flavor of what is being recommended. So for example, Within the pillar of protect vulnerable residents, we are recommending establishing a rental property licensing program. And this I believe is something that you all have started to talk about, um, but we believe that because of the high rates of rental property that you have in the city, because of the varying quality of that, a rental licensing program would be useful. Within the promote and enhance existing neighborhoods section, we talk about establishing a receivership program, which I believe is well underway, right? And so the thing is that you all have been moving so fast that sometimes the report is already outdated by the time it's hitting the decks, but we want to acknowledge that this is, we think that's going to be an important tool moving forward. In terms of producing affordably priced housing, there are real opportunities to partner with your nonprofit housing developers, either those who currently exist in the city or that might be invited in. And so we do want to encourage you to think about all partners for affordably priced housing. Last, for, over, for lowering barriers to development and redevelopment, as I said, you all have a culture of being open for business, which is great. There are still things that could be done. For example, reforming the zoning code, which the last update, I believe, is 22 years old. That is based on an even older zoning code. And I want to acknowledge many, many, many cities around, this, around the state are facing similar needs to update their zoning code. So you're certainly not alone. The, um, so just I'm going to close here in order to make sure that there's time for comments, to make sure that we can have a discussion of desire, if you desire. But just want to note that you are really building from a position of strength. It was exciting for us to produce this uh, plan for you all because we know there are so many partners already at the table, so much willingness already in place to help contribute to the success of the housing real estate market, and, sh and that there's a real commitment to ensuring that all residents in Springfield are housed and have access to quality housing. So we end the, uh, the plan, and I'll end here by just saying, continue to rely on the Housing Solutions Consortium and other partners. The city, local government, municipal government should not be responsible for doing this all by themselves. You all have many other partners around the community and beyond who want to contribute to the success of this plan. And again, just kind of brought more broadly, the success of housing in Springfield. I'll end here. Um, I, also, I guess I should also acknowledge my colleague Aaron Clapper, who was instrumental in producing this report, is sick and unable to join us today, but I do want to acknowledge his contributions. And with that, I'm happy to take questions. Questions from commissioners? Commissioners, I will, um, I will say this report is set to be publicly released tomorrow morning. Um, it will be hosted on GOPC's website. There will be a link on our website. So the public will be able to access the full report starting tomorrow. Um, and I hope that people do. And then Allison has also agreed to uh, be a part of uh, one of our podcasts. So there will be a podcast next Wednesday also um, talking about the report. Because this really is our community's roadmap.
for for housing for all. Um, and so we're we're very excited about continuing to push push the plan and encourage partnership. Um, Allison, how long have you been at your position? Commissioner, I've been executive director six years, but I've been at Greater Ohio for 12 years. Okay. So like just I think it's just important to note where Springfield was and where Springfield is. Mm -hmm. And just to highlight that publicly. Maybe can you think back a decade ago? Oh my gosh. Entering this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is this is, I mean, I guess when I say like you guys are building from a position of strength, it's because I know where you have, are coming from, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you had good things in in right. the works, but um there has things have really gelled and accelerated over the last I'd say six seven years and yeah I mean I would also say that you all um, particularly on the housing front compared to other small legacy cities around the state and nationally are I would say kind of at leading the pack in terms of thinking about how to invest in housing and the importance of housing in the future of the city so yeah I do want to certainly acknowledge there's been a lot of a lot of ground gained and this a lot of these uh, this thoughts this process come out of the housing consortium right and getting this think tank kind of going there, right? Correct. And, and that's been going on for four years? Four years, we learned today. Yeah. And so I think our commissioner, Dave Estroff, has been taking the lead on that as well with John Brown from Park National Bank, right? Yes. So I just want to give them credit because I know they've Absolutely. put a lot of work in that for us and, and uh, for the community at large. Absolutely. So, thank you. <clears throat> Questions or comments? Uh, I was in a meeting all afternoons. So I have. have. <laughs> uh, besides that, you have to read the thing in order. More questions. Well, th Andrew. Yes, thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, I'm excited for the work that's ahead uh, in implementing uh, this plan. So appreciate all the work that's gone into it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Commissioners, we do have several add-ons tonight. Oh. Is there a motion to adjourn this? I move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Rue? Yes. Ms. Phillip? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Okay, Mr. Yes, Commissioners, we do have several add-ons tonight. Um, first, uh, there is an update to item 008-16. Uh, the ordinance and agreement uh, has an amended address. And then under first readings, we have 282-08, which is confirming and approving Amendment 5 to the hangar lease between the city and Select Tech Services Corporation, doing business as Select Tech at the Springfield Beckley Municipal Airport. Under emergency ordinances, we have 220-22, which is authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement by and between the city of Springfield and our AFSCME local 1608 Ohio Council 8 AFL-CIO in declaring an emergency. And then one emergency resolution, which is reappointing Shirley Campbell to the Civil Service Commission in declaring said an emergency. With that, we have about three minutes before the formal meeting. Anything anyone want to say while we have minutes? You're probably still on air, though.
Mr. O'Neill? Here. Ms. Phillip? Yes. Dr. Here. Estrop? <laughs> Mr. Rue? Mr. Copeland? Here. Please rise for the invocation and pledge of allegiance. Our God, we're grateful to gather and to try to make good decisions for the people of Springfield. Help us to, help us to do it well this evening. In your name we pray. Amen. Their motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Then moved and seconded. Any comments? Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Phillip? Yes. Mr. Rue? Yes. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Clerk will proceed with first readings. Amending ordinance number 91 90 passed March 12, 1991, and commonly known as the codified ordinances of the City of Springfield, Ohio, by amending certain provisions of the Traffic and General Offenses Codes. Authorizing the city manager to enter into a land lease agreement with Spartan Airport Development, LLC, for real property located at the Springfield Beckley Municipal Airport, consisting of approximately 15 acres. Expanding the designated community entertainment district pursuant to the re provisions of revised code 4301.80. Confirming there, and there questions or comments on this. We have, there's there's an an we have an add on. There. Confirming and approving amendment number five to the hangar lease wow. between the city and Select Tech Services Corporation doing business as Select Tech at the Springfield, at the Springfield Beckley Municipal Airport. Okay. Now, are there any questions or comments on first readings? If you just want to speak to the community entertainment district again, briefly, and what that is. Yeah, commissioners. So uh, the community entertainment <coughs> district opens up additional opportunities for uh, liquor licenses, specifically those used by restaurants, uh, retailers. Uh, D5 permits are typically what are utilized by restaurants. And so state legislation enacted uh, the community entertainment an entertainment district section to allow for a specified area to allow for additional D5, what they call J permits. And so what it does is it opens up for 15 additional of these D5 J permits. This area uh, is basically made up of our downtown and uh, provides again that opportunity for restaurants and so forth to seek and obtain one of these D5J permits because there are limited quantities of these permits uh, in a community. And so it's to incentivize development specifically around restaurants and so forth in a given area. So that's what we're doing here. Not to be confused with DORA, which is the designated outdoor refreshment area, which allows you to carry the cup from place to place. Talk about the expansion. Yeah, actually, I'm going to ask if Bobby Bruno would like to talk a little bit about the actual expanded area. Good evening. So we had 75 acres uh, in our community entertainment district before. Um, we've seen some interest from businesses or sites where potential businesses go um, that would be interested in taking advantage of this. So that's where the expansion comes from. So that includes the Main Street Pub, the Dole Beer Building, and some other sites. Thank you. What else? Any other questions or comments on first reading? Or proceed with second readings. Authorizing the finance director to enter into agreements with the Huntington with the Huntington National Bank for Treasury Management Depository Services and security custody services for an amount not to exceed $150,000 for the initial three-year term with the option to renew for three additional two-year terms. Move to adopt. Second. Second. Questions or comments from the commission? From the audience? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Rue? Yes. Ms. Phillip? Yes. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. 
accepting the application for annexation of certain territory containing 29.232 acres more or less in Springfield Township and commonly known as the 2399 and 2427 South Burnett Road annexation area to the city of Springfield, Ohio. Move to adopt. Second. And moved and seconded. Questions or comments from the commission? From the audience? Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Rue? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Authorizing the city manager to enter into a site host agreement with Green Spot JC LLC for electric vehicle charging infrastructure at no cost to the city. Move to adopt. Second. Been moved and seconded. Questions or comments from the commission? From the audience? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Rue? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Accepting the recommendations of the Tax Incentive Re Review Council for Enterprise Zone Agreements, Community Reinvestment Area Agreements, and Tax Increment Financing Projects. Move to adopt. Second. And move and seconded. Questions or comments from the Commission? From the audience? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Rue? Yes. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Proceeding to emergency ordinances, uh, clerk will proceed with uh, amendment with 0152. Amending ordinance number 22-14 to revise the transfer of monies authorized and declaring an emergency therein. Move to adopt. Okay. And move and seconded. Questions or comments from the commission? From the audience? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Ms. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Rue? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Providing for supplemental appropriations within various funds and declaring an emergency therein. Move to adopt. Second. Been moved and seconded. Questions or comments from the commission? From the audience? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Rue? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Confirming purchases and the obtaining of services for the city and providing for payments therefore and declaring an emergency therein. Move to adopt. Second. And move and seconded. Questions or comments from the commission? From the audience? Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Phillip? Yes. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Rue? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Authorizing an increase in the purchase order with Clemens, Nelson and Associates Incorporated in an amount not to exceed $50,000 for a total amount not to exceed $100,000 for human relations consulting services provided through September 22nd, 2022, confirming and approving related expenditures incurred from May 1st, 2022 to the passage of this ordinance authorizing the issuance of a purchase order with Clemens Nelson and Associates Incorporated in an amount not to exceed $100,000 for human relations consulting services provided from September 23rd, 2022 through September 22nd, 2023 and declaring an emergency therein. Move to adopt. Second. And moved and seconded. Questions or comments from the commission? City manager, you want to explain what this is, please? So. Yeah, consulting so services. Commission, we uh, are working with Clemens Nelson, which is a consulting group, and I'll make one change. It should have read Human Resources Consulting Services. So uh, as it relates to our labor negotiations and bargaining units, uh, we work with Clemens Nelson on these types of matters and issues. Um, both our legal team and our Human Resources Department uh, we'll work with this consultant on a variety of uh, labor-related items and issues, uh, contract negotiations, arbitrations, those types of things. So they just provide a consulting service to us. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Rue? Yes. Ms. Phillip? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Authorizing the city manager to apply for aid in the financing of operating assistance projects pursuant to the urban transit program 
in the amount of $195,261, authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation to accept funding through the Urban Transit Program, authorizing the city manager and the director of finance to perform all acts and execute all documents they consider necessary to fulfill the city's obligations under said grant application and corresponding agreement and to comply with all relevant local, state, and federal legal requirements and to provide assurances and additional information as required by the Ohio Department of Transportation and declaring an, an emergency therein. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Questions or comments from the commission? From the audience? Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Phillip? Yes. Mr. Rue? Yes. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Authorizing the city manager to enter into a new construction senior rental housing loan agreement, home funded in 2022, the Community Gardens 2, with Neighborhood Housing Partnership of Greater Springfield Incorporated, and the Community Gardens 2 LP to provide seven, $750,000 in home funds to assist in the redevelopment of the former community hospital site located at the corner of Burnett Road and High Street and the former Schaefer Middle School site located at 330 South Burnett Road. Auth good. Authorizing the city manager to execute a release of a part of premises from restrictive use covenant and a release of part of premises from mortgage to release a portion of the phase one parcel, which will become part of phase two and declaring an, an emergency therein. Move to adopt. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Questions or comments from the commission? Regina, it wasn't near as long on my paper. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a question. I wonder if I could hear from Shannon on this and maybe speak a little bit to what we're doing here. And then Shannon, while you're speaking to that, if you have any dates, if you want to throw those bad boys in there, that'd be great. Sure. I will Thanks. actually ask the development partners to throw the bad boys in for you because I don't want to speak for them. Okay, cool. Um, but in general, sir, uh, this is this is an agreement a long time coming. Yep. Um, we actually, you you know that we have worked with Neighborhood Housing Partnership and their development partner, Buckeye Hope Foundation, um, throughout the development of Community Garden One. And beginning in 2016, they started working on Community Garden Two. So we're very glad to be here tonight, um, cooperating and uh, providing assistance to our development partners. To tie it back to the work session, one of the pillar recommendations is to increase the production of our nonprofit housing providers and partners. And we are very glad and very proud to be partnered with Neighborhood Housing Partnership in the work that they do. So $750,000 of home funds, this is federal entitlement money that comes to the city to do exactly this work. And I will invite either Greg or Ian to share the timing of the project but overall this will be a senior development um, much needed one bedroom um, development on the east end of the community and is going to help in that first step of releasing that pressure valve in some of our housing crises that we're having greg womax neighborhood housing partnership uh, we're incredibly grateful for the partnership with the city to make this happen. Um, had a great application, construction costs shot up, and uh, we were scrambling around. And uh, great thanks. I, I can't thank Shannon and her team enough for working with us and the legal department as well. So thank you very much for uh, this. It really means a lot. Uh, construction should be starting. I probably should let my assistant come up and share that. But uh, Nobody wants Oh, well, I can share a date. <laughs> we're, uh, we're planning to close on this project with OFA next, uh, well, coming Tuesday, one week. Thursday. Thursday, I'm sorry. And then construct, and hopefully we'll start not long after that. Yeah. Ian? Yeah. So um, I'm Ian Mowdy with Buckeye Community Hope Foundation. We're in Columbus. Um, yes, the plan right now is we're tentatively scheduled to close on the 26th of next week on Thursday. A um, couple moving parts left papers to sign and then construction would start um, within a week after that um, we're looking at a 14 month construction period so everything should be complete by the fall of 2023 um, units and buildings will be built phases so it won't all be done at the end there will be 
six deer, 12 deer as, as we move through it. But uh, I would look at the fall of 2020 done. Thank you again. Any questions from commissioners? Congratulations for staying with it. <laughs> Thank you. It's a great project. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, it's been it's been a long haul, but we're we're very excited to to see it break ground. So I heard Shannon say one bedrooms. Will there be anything outside of just one bedrooms, or will all the new uh, properties be? No. So the first phase was all two bedrooms. Okay. Um, so there's 52 bedroom units. Um, we got a lot of feedback and a lot of demand for one bedroom units. Okay. We have a waiting list that is years long already uh, wow. already from when phase one leased up. So um, with the addition of the 61 bedrooms, it'll be nearly a 50 50 split between ones. But that's why we decided to go with all all ones. And how would someone get on the waiting list if they wanted to? They can that? they can contact NHP. Um, that would be the best way to do it. Okay. And, yes, and it is it is um, senior housing, right. so it's 55 and older. Um, at least one person in the house would be 55. I know everybody, everybody when I say 55. Uh, any other questions? <laughs> All right, thank you. Wait, would you too. please leave him alone? I, I shall, thank you, Mayor Copeland. <laughs> any other questions? You just click a call, call a roll. <laughs> Mr. O'Neill. Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Rue? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Authorizing the exercise of the city's option to renew the contract with Cinegro Central LLC for removal and land application of biosolids for an amount not to exceed $1,275,800 and declaring an, an emergency therein. Move to adopt. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Questions or comments from the commission? From the audience? Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Rue? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Authorizing the city manager and the chief of police to submit a grant application for the 2022 Burn Justice Assistance Grant Program Award to provide funding in the amount of $33,408 to purchase various safety technology equipment, authorizing the city manager to enter into an inter interlocal agreement between the city and the Board of County Commissioners of Clark County, Ohio, for an amount not to exceed $16,704 in connection with the 2022 Burn Justice Assistance Grant and declaring an, an emergency therein. So move. Second. The move and seconded. Questions or comments from the commission? From the audience? Clerk, call the roll. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Rue? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement by and between the city of Springfield, Ohio, and AFSCME Local 1608, Ohio Local 8. AFL-CIO and declaring an, an emergency therein. Move to adopt. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Questions or comments from the commission? From the audience? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Rue? Yes. Ms. Phillip? Yes. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Reappointing Shirley Campbell to the Civil Service Commission and declaring an, an emergency therein. Move to adopt. Second. Been moved and seconded. Questions or comments from the commission? <clears throat> from the audience? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Rue? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Okay. That concludes the agenda. I think we should uh, congratulate our acting clerk. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> for her work. Yes. Thank you. Special thank you from me. This isn't something she was excited to do, so <laughs> we appreciate her work. Are there any items that come before us from commissioners? I just want to make one other comment on the housing development that we just approved for neighborhood housing. I remember so vividly when this was brought forth, the original phase, and we almost had to go to war in this room with people because they thought it was low income housing and it was going to ruin their neighborhood. And we emphasize the word senior housing, people on fixed income. 
people on Social Security. I haven't heard one word this time on this particular project. And that is rewarding to us and really rewarding to you because not only did we do what we said we were going to do, you guys made it happen. And it, it was, it was, it was just blood curdling the night that, you know, it almost tore the whole East End apart for a while because, you know, the development, you're just shoving something in some place that didn't really need to be. And there couldn't have been a better project that has gone on in that particular area. So thank you for your indulgence, Sarah. And you, you know, you're, you just stayed with it and you needed to do that. So thank you. I think the neighborhood sees it as an improvement. It is an improvement, totally yes. Is. Anything else from commissioners? Anyone in the audience want to address? Is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Thank you. It. There it is. He moved to adjourn. And I and seconded. Okay. There it is. And the clerk has to call the roll. Oh, great. Okay. Ms. Ms. Phillips. Here. And Mr. O'Neill. Yes. Mr. Rue. Yes. Mr. Copeland. Yes. Meetings adjourned. Robert. 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 Robert.